It's Bourbonite. Hello, I'm Chad. I'm Sarah. Welcome back, Sarah. Thank you. And we have a unfamiliar bottle here on the table, but a much talked about bottle. What do we have, Sarah? We have Traveler Whiskey. So we did a review of this bottle on live, Sarah. Mm -hmm. So we've already talked about it. It's you know, a little different because it's a live format, but we're gonna edit, chop that up, and serve it to you. Just know that this is from one of our live recordings. So take it away live, Chad and Sarah. The Traveler, <laughs> it's like we couldn't not do it because everyone is doing this. And a lot of people wanna hear other people's opinions on it. Sure. So we are, Glad to be able to weigh in. This was actually picked up on uh, my hunt in Ohio. So I got it for $39.99. Okay. This is the Chris Stapleton, the you know Grammy Award winning uh, country artist in collaboration with Harlan Wheatley of Buffalo Trace. And it's not a bourbon. That's sort of the weird thing. And everyone's been saying this. I'm sure you guys it's have It's traveler whiskey. Yeah, it's a blended whiskey. Uh, it has proof. Canadian in it. It's blend number 40 right there on the bottle. It's because they did 50 blends and the 40th was the right one. The articles that I've read have said, you know, so it's nice and smooth, smooth, smooth. Because let's face it, this is marketed more towards a very occasional uh, casual you whiskey You think drinker, that it's right? more of someone who is a fan of Chris Stapleton, that that's the target market or that it's just for mm -hmm. your more of your be beginner crowd. Early on in the well, bourbon journey, I guess I would say. Two circles, that middle section, and then right? Yeah. I mean some Chris Stapleton fans are Stapleton fans are gonna buy this and never even open it. It's just gonna sit on their shelf as a, a memento or whatever you want to call it. And then others Decor. are gonna try it and they're like, yeah, I wanna try some whiskey here. It's really smooth. So this isn't He's made so for you. And, it isn't made for you and me. It's probably not made that. for uh for a lot of you either. But But would like to know. Like you said, everybody else been trying it, so yeah. I gotta know too. If everybody else gonna jump off a bridge, well, where do where do I get there? How do I get there? <laughs> Another thing that a lot of people are talking about is you know the price forty dollars. Forty dollars for a ninety proof blended whiskey, and that's suggested. It was flying off the shelves and actually already going in the secondary. People, no, were, yes, come on, I know. Forty dollars is enough for. Blended whiskey, because normally blended whiskey, that's the stuff on the bottom of the shelf. I know. You know? Well, that's... you've got Harlan Wheatley's name on it, so that's obviously going to buy you something. something. And I'm not saying that I agree with that. I'm just saying, like, you've got these two names stacked behind it that people in the whiskey community know or people in the music community know. Right. So you have that. Well, here's the other thing. It's not even Buffalo Trace. It's Barton 1792 is the very strong consensus. Is that what people think, believe that it is? Yes. Okay. So, well, both owned Saz by Sazerac. Sazerac, which they own a lot of... Canadian juice, um, and then Barton 1792, and then Harlan was there, and Chris Stapleton was there. I did read an article, and because a lot of people also said, hey, Chris Stapleton is sober. So how is this? Uh, like, why is this relevant? Why did you pick a spirit yeah. uh, to release? Yeah, it says, um, clarifies a rumor that he's sober. Uh, so he's 45 now, and he just says that he's cutting back uh, a lot now. But if you walk into the first room of his house, he probably has like 200 <clears throat> bottles of bourbon there. So I think the word sober got used in an interview, and it's probably a disservice to sober people to call me sober. It's kind of grain forward on the nose. There's no age statement, anything else. Like, right, because it's blended, but we don't know yeah. what the... Well, we have a proudly blended and bottled by Buffalo Trace Distillery. That doesn't mean that it's That's Buffalo Trace Distillery juice, right? Yeah. Yeah. Clever, clever, clever girl. Yeah, I get kind of like a sweet grain, you know, yeah. like a sweet oatmeal kind of on the nose. Maple brown sugar oatmeal. Not a whole lot on the nose. It's not too dissimilar to whiskey on the nose. Now let's wait for the taste, but. To whiskey. Oh, sorry, to bourbon. I it, was like, it's it a whiskey. whiskey. It is a whiskey, yeah, to bourbon. <laughs> so. It just smells like an not very complex. Yeah, that's so weird. Bourbon. I specifically get like, the packets of maple brown sugar oatmeal from Oh, the box. Quaker Oats. Yeah, Quaker Oats, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's what I get, but. Totally. Well, let's see, to your health. It kind of tastes like oatmeal in a way, like boozy oatmeal. Yeah, there's a little bit of some type of spice element. Right. There. A little cinnamon. A uh, little cinnamon, yeah. It is sort of like cinnamon oatmeal. Well, and I couldn't, yep. so like, I can't tell if it's the maple brown sugar or the apple cinnamon, you know, with the little chunks of apple, because it does have mm -hmm. a little bit of apple on the palate, which I didn't get on the nose. Not for me, I don't <laughs> think it's for me. 
Um, I don't know who it's for, to be honest. It's okay. All right, let's take a pause here so we can tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get this very warm hoodie that I'm wearing. Of course, my hat, uh, water glasses, Glen Cairns that we're drinking from, all of our glassware. We also have bottle cut candles, a little bit of that uh, barrel aged coffee left, and of course, our golden hour cocktail syrup, and more always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can also become a patron at patreon.com slash it's bourbon night and join our community for as little as one buck a month. And later this week, that's what we'll be doing a double barrel pick release, uh, which may just be Patreon only. It depends on if it sells out or not, uh, but patrons get first and usually only access to our bottles. Uh, so that's where you can sign up to get that after the episode exclusives, discounts on that merch we were talking about, and more. All right, we'll be back after this. Second tip. I don't know that I would call this smooth. It has a little mm. bit of a bite at the end. It does. And it has a little spice. For 90 proof, it has more bite than I would expect. If you were going for... And heat. If you were going for smooth, smooth, yeah, it wouldn't have this little bit of bite. And to make matters worse, it's it's not very complex. There's not much there. It's just kind of, yeah, like sweet oatmeal. Mm -hmm. Sweet apple cinnamon oatmeal kind of. Mm. And then it's got this like bite at the end and it almost like, yeah, it's a little hot on the finish. And so not only do I not love it when things are just described as smooth, I don't actually feel like this Cap like that, that, <laughs> that applies it is. here. Yeah, I'm not saying it's com it's really rough. I mean, it's 90 proof, so it's as easy as a 90 proof would be to drink. If I was new to whiskey and got something because I thought it would be smooth and approachable, which to me I think people just like they don't want to feel any burn, right? I don't want to feel any right. any intense heat, or again that just like alcohol bite, which I do think you get on the finish of this. So I think it's interesting to set up that expectation and then put this there. I don't know. Honestly, it has a little bit of a dry finish. But you know, the 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 search for smooth, which I think from, you know, uh, standing back and looking at it that point of view makes a lot of sense. Hey, there's going to be a lot of people who are just Stapleton fans who are going to get this. Um, some of them will actually open it up and drink it. And we want it to not be harsh. So they'll be like, oh, and they, well, they want them to go buy a second bottle or maybe tiptoe into other Buffalo <clears throat> Trace products, right? right? So I get this, the smooth thing, which does lead to the, the blended whiskey uh, because you know blended whiskey is um, can be distilled at over 160, whereas mm. that's the cutoff for bourbon. So you're at 160 to 190 proof. You know, vodka is 190 above. So it, it's the more you distill it, the higher proofs, the more you get out, the more just almost like neutral grain spirit, like vodka, neutral grain spirit, devoid of flavor. I could see going the blended whiskey route just for that search for smoothness for the audience that they were targeting this towards. Did it work? I don't think it, it worked, honestly. Yeah, I, I agree. I just think maybe that's not the right way to approach this one, or it's just, I don't know, like I said, you're setting up an expectation that I feel like that you're then expected to deliver on, and I don't think that this meets the creative brief. Oh. I want to read you, I think it's from a USA Today. They listed some tasty notes. Characterized by notes of oak, sweet maple, tart, currant, and leather. Leather? Mm. Complex aromas of vanilla, aged fruit, and buttery shortbread. I could see the shortbread. I rounded off by caramel and a touch of oak. I get no oak. It's more like a cedar. I mean, there's a wood in there, like a dry wood, but it, it's not like your barrel oak of a bourbon. The flavor profile also showcases a touch of sweetness, though all that are not lying there, followed by spice, toasted nut and oak flavors closing with a robust finish. I, you know, it's funny when you were trying to describe like what type of wood do you think it is, the, on the palate, it reminds me of, if I could taste the way that this smells, like the lumber aisle at Lowe's, ah. like that fresh cut mm -hmm. yeah. lumber. Fresh cut cedar, you know. Something like that. Fresh the cut way pine. that that smells is kind of the taste. Mm -hmm. People but it's not like, so do you lick sawdust? No, charred, I don't. It's not charred, you know, right. oak. Fresh. Barrel oak. So $40, and that's just retail. Please don't pay more than $40 for this. Um, I'm going to give it the no recommend. I expected to feel that way about it. I'm also going to give it a pass. Uh, I am interested in how it stacks up against other celebrity whiskeys, just in terms of... Well, blended whiskey, so it's not it's in the not running. It's not in the running? No. All right, hell, we'll throw it in. Whatever. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just because of the Buffalo Trace connection, I guess. Right. It's not for me. But hey, it's for somebody. But hey. You know, made by, again, 
Buffalo Trace, not necessarily distilled by at Buffalo Trace, but made by Buffalo Trace, we can acknowledge that this is a product of theirs that we don't like. But yeah. there are so many other things that they make that we do like. So mm -hmm. yeah. I'll always say that if I ever come across something that I'm like, I don't <sighs> like this thing from this distillery. But here's a handful of other things I do like from them. Because mm -hmm. not every product in a portfolio is for you. Right. Yeah. And that's that's not that's one just of them. the way it goes. In life, you'll never mm -hmm. make everybody happy. Yeah.